Hey guys, we are back with some more Salt Lake City Lakers franchise mode. And in this one, first off, before we get started with anything, I uh, should mention that this series is now being uploaded on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, as opposed to just Thursday, as the New Jersey Devils GM mode has finished off now. So this will become the main GM mode on the channel up until it is finished. So now, as we take a look at our lines, we can see that Burakovsky... Byfield and Wright actually create a plus three when they're all on the second line as opposed to the third line where they only have a plus one. We need to give Byfield every chance to succeed that he can. Obviously, Wright as well, but it's a little bit more important for Byfield because he didn't really grow at all going into this season. He had almost no growth between the start of last season and the start of this season. So we really need to give Byfield every advantage he can get. I'm considering putting him on the power play as well soon, but we'll see how he handles second line minutes to start out along with Burakovsky and Wright. And I did the same thing on defense, except with Dundas, because Dundas actually gets the plus three with Hayden Flurry as well. So I figured he'll get Flurry some more time, he'll get Dundas some more time. Dundas will simulate like an 85 overall, Flurry will simulate like an 88 overall. It can only benefit the both of them. And hopefully. This will put Dundas on a pretty good uh, growth track. Uh, obviously, he's in his rookie season. He's only 19 years of age, but hopefully he can handle it as he is an 82 overall. And once again, he gets that plus three from the line chemistry. So that leaves Montour with Manson and then Mata with Benning. Also of note, Hedl was moved down to the third line as apparently he is the third line scoring forward at an 84 overall. Don't quite understand that. But what that does do, it obviously allows... Byfield and Wright to move up with Burakovsky to the second line. That means the first line is Kasha, Faxa, and Kapanen. So those are the only line changes that I have to show you guys. Now we will get in to the start of the regular season, and I think we're going to do a commentary third period. So we will simulate through the preseason, and I will see you guys in one second. Ooh, okay, hold on. <laughs> we just got an interesting trade offer here. Mata and a third for Edmonton's first and Tampa's second. Hmm, <laughs> uh, that's that's tempting. That's very tempting. Especially given that Mata is a bottom six defenseman on our team. He's only an 81 overall. He's 28 years of age. I, I wouldn't mind doing this. I really would not mind doing this. I mean, I obviously he's going to have that minus 63 there last year. We were a terrible team last year. I don't think, I think we had, uh, what, 22 wins total? So that, that's going to be a given. But... The fact that they want Mata and a third for a first and a second, I don't know if I can turn that down. <laughs> That's pretty juicy. I uh, I wonder, I mean, we could replace Mata easily. Yeah, that's not something that I think I could pass up on. <laughs> I, I don't think I could pass up on this. Yeah, I mean, this is, I didn't even, I mean, you guys saw I didn't even offer this trade. The Oilers came to us with, with this trade. We are about to fleece the Oilers here. Proposed trade. Trade accepted. There you go. <laughs> that. That was a fleecing. Oh my. I mean, obviously we had to give up a defenseman for it, but it's only an 81 overall defenseman, and you can find those pretty much anywhere. So... <laughs> Whatever you say, Edmonton. <laughs> Whatever you say. I will gladly take your first round pick and second round pick for a top six defenseman and a third rounder. That is <laughs> absolutely, that has got to be one of the worst trades I have ever seen a computer team offer. So I guess for right now, we'll film Mason in there, but I'm definitely going to want to go after another defenseman here since we... <laughs> We just traded away Mata for basically a gold mine in comparison. So we're going to have to, I guess, just either find someone in free agency or find someone through another trade that is far less expensive than what uh, Edmonton acquired Mata for. So obviously the picks that we got for were, for were not for this year, but they were for next year. But still, a first and a second for a top six defense? I mean, come on. <laughs> you can't say no to that. So I managed to find Connor Murphy from Winnipeg. He is currently on a one-year deal for $2 million, and his pro scout assessment has him at a three-bar all-defensive pairings scheme fit, so that is what I like about him, although 
It's according to Coach Pete Reed's scheme, not our current coach, because we fired Pete Reed <laughs> in the offseason. So I guess that's an assessment from last year. So, you know what? Regardless, we're getting a pretty good defenseman for pretty cheap. We're going to try getting him for just Jesper Oberg. He's 60 overall at 20 years of age, low top six potential. We can use Murphy now more than we could use Auberg later. So proposed trade, will that go through? Nope. Okay, so now we're going to try adding in a fourth. So Auberg and a fourth for Murphy, proposed trade. A fourth and a sixth and Auberg for Murphy. There you go, trade accepted. So there you go, Murphy's now in our lineup, and we will get on with the simulation. So here we are at the end of the preseason, and we did not have a good preseason. We went 2-4-1, and one, but all that really I really care about is seeing how our rookies did. So we will sort by rookie skaters. Byfield, Wright, and Dundas. So Byfield got three goals, Wright got two assists, and Dundas also got a goal. Not bad, but uh, once again, we'll see how they perform in the first month of the regular season, which we will get underway right now. And we have our first game of the season against Philly. We will slow sim each and every game <laughs> until all three of them get their first NHL goals. And we will also do a commentary third period against the Vegas Golden Knights. So here we go. Game against the Philadelphia Flyers. First period. That'll be a nothing-nothing tie. We're leading in the shots. Second period. And they get two goals. Provorov and Giroux on Shesterkin. That's fine. Third period. And oh boy. <laughs> that was not a good game at all. No goals whatsoever. So we're going to continue on to this game against Vegas. Presuming the game is close, we will do a commentary third period. And hopefully we get to see a first goal in there somewhere. For either Dundas or Byfield or Wright. First period. And we have a goal by Faxa on Flurry, And then Coughlin on Shesterkin. Second period. And you have Simmons with the goal and Heedle with the goal to make it 3-2. And Wah with a goal on Shesterkin. It's a one goal game. Let's go into it. So here we go. Third period against the Vegas Golden Knights. The two newest expansion teams up against each other. And face off one by Vegas. Hamilton receives it from Theodore. Stone tries to get to him, his teammate, but gets it to Kapanen instead. Kapanen with the dangles and the shot on net that Flurry will save and cover up. Kasha, Faxa, and Kapanen out there now for Salt Lake City. And out there against Marcheseau, Hala, and Stone. Face off one and taken by Marcheseau. Marcheseau does a little dangle there. Gets by number four, Flurry as Shesterkin makes the save and he covers up as well. Same line still out there for both teams. And phase off one by Vegas. Marcia so, uh, Theodore, I should say, tried to get it to the net, but Kapanen takes it. And Kapanen circles back, tries to find the defenseman who was coming late, but Theodore will take it the other way for Vegas. Now Hala to Marcia so with a shot. The shot that went to the boards. Marcia so back down low for Stone. Hala. Theodore for Hamilton. And they play catch a lot. <laughs> the, the Stone. Marcheseau with a shot, and that one just wide. I believe it deflected. Hala circles around, finds Stone from Marcheseau with the one-timer. And that was a beauty of a shot that just got by Shesterkin. And we have a tie game here. What a shot. <laughs> what a shot by Marcheseau. All right, here we go. Burakovsky, Byfield, and right out there against Sorensen. Glass and Tuck. Face off one by Byfield. Byfield takes it from his defenseman and the shot on net. Flurry covers up. Not a whole lot of flow to this game so far. Hopefully we see uh, the action start to pick up later in this period. Face off one by Byfield. Back for Manson. Byfield again. From Manson and Byfield, the first goal of his NHL career. There it is. Off the feed from Josh Manson, I believe. And yes, indeed, there is the celebration for Quinton Byfield. It's Byfield time, indeed. There you go. First career goal. As he shares the ice with Shane Wright. And let's see if Wright... Did Wright get an assist on this? I don't think so. Manson obviously got one, but who, if anybody, got the secondary assist is what I'm curious about. I don't believe it shows it here in the replay, but what a shot by Byfield. My goodness. And I believe that is also our first time hearing the goal horn here for your Salt Lake City Lakers. Let's see who is assisted by. Uh, yes, right, right. 
gets the assist and what is quite possibly his first NHL point. There you go. So, uh, Byfield from Manson and Wright to make it a 4-3 lead for your Salt Lake City Lakers. Oh, my. Second line still out there. Burakovsky, Byfield, and Wright. Again, Sorensen, Glass, and Tuck. Faceoff pushed by Vegas. Taken by Sorensen. For McNabb. For Schmidt. Down low for Tuck. Sorensen gets it over to McNabb with a shot. And a great save by Shesterkin. And taken by Wright. Wright tries the cross-ice pass. But intercepted by a Vegas player. That would be number 20, Sorensen. McNabb. Finds number 20 and what a shot. Oh man, that was a bottle popper. And we are tied once again. A great vision from McNabb to find Sorensen there. And he, wow. We are seeing some pretty nice goals in this commentary third period. Another one-timer that just goes right over the shoulder and pops the bottle. And we have another tie game. Simmons, Hedl, and Palat out there against Manjapane. Carlson. And Clifford, face-off won by Carlson. Back for Schmidt. Over to McNabb. McNabb for Schmidt. And Heedle intercepts it. That was supposed to be a pass, I believe, for Clifford. But it was redirected, I believe. Murphy tries to take that, but he is bodied off the puck. Manjapane for Clifford. Murphy intercepts. He gets it to Simmons. Simmons into the zone. Simmons tries to dangle by. Cannot. Manjapane around his own net. Finds Clifford. For Carlson. Carlson is able to get it cross ice to Coughlin. And Coughlin will circle back and slow down the pace. Clifford into the Salt Lake City zone. He dumps in. Finds Carlson. Carlson behind the net. Battling with a Laker as he gets it up to number 22. Carlson now with it. Tanev to Benning. Back to Murphy. Murphy for Palat. And Palat will manage to finally find number 72, Heedle, but the play is offside with 2.55 remaining in the third. Fourth line still out there, Tanev, Bennett, and force back of Carlson on the draw against Krebs, Grant, and Wah. Force back of Carlson takes it, finds Flurry. Flurry, cross ice for force back of Carlson, and the shot that is saved by Flurry. Krebs for Grant with 1.30 remaining in the third, finds Theodore. Hamilton back from Krebs. Roth for the middle and Krebs with the shot that was that was whiffed on. And forced back at Carlson into the zone now for Flurry. For forced back at Carlson with the goal with 49 seconds remaining. And we have broken the tie once again. <sighs> what a game this is. As the feed from Flurry and the one timer by forced back at Carlson goes short side with it. And we have broken the tie once again. What a pass from Flurry, and what a shot from Forrest back of Carlson there. Man, this is actually this has been one of the more entertaining third commentary third periods we've had in a while. Kasha, Faxa, and Kapanen out there against Marcheseau, Halla, and Stone. Face off one back by Faxa. He receives it back from his defenseman. Faxa for Dundas. Flurry. Kapanen in the middle for Kasha, but that's intercepted by Vegas. Stone and Vegas pulling their goaltender now. Okay, not much to lose with 33 seconds remaining. Trying to get a goal here. Bodied off the puck is Stone. Pinned along the boards by Flurry is Marcheseau. And Flurry will try to get it out but cannot. Howla finds Tuck with a brilliant pass. Marcheseau with the shot that is blocked by Dundas. Dundas gets it to Kasha with the empty net. 14 seconds remaining and dumped in by Kasha. Hamilton meets it. The nine seconds remaining. What can Vegas do? Final rush. Hamilton. Three seconds remaining. Manjapana, can they even get in the zone? No, they cannot. And we hold on for the five to four victory. Okay, so after quite the entertaining commentary third period, we are back in the simulation. And we will now go up against Florida and Ottawa and see if we have right... Or Dundas's first career goal, as we just had Byfields not too long ago. First period against Florida. That'll be a 2-0 lead for them. Lafreniere and Huberto on Montebo now. So, Shesterkin getting the night off. Second period. Oh, boy. Lafreniere again, and then Tippett and Bjorkstrand. One of our old players coming back to bite us. Third period. 
And, oh my, they brazil us Malgan twice, and Faxa on Burke, uh, Bobrovsky, I meant. So, game against the Ottawa Senators now. Let's hope we, it's a little bit better. And, uh, hopefully we get a first goal here. First period, that'll be a goal for Brown, on Shesterkin. Second period, that'll be a goal for Kachuk, on Shesterkin. <laughs> Come on, boys, get something here. Third period, oh man, Coop. I was just starting for the three nothing shutout loss against the Ottawa Senators. Not looking good. So obviously we had a pretty big game there against Vegas, but other than that, we are not having the greatest start to the season. Huge game against Toronto. Let's hope we can get back on track here. Because if we start the season one and four, that would not be ideal. First period, and that'll be one goal for us, Kasha on Bernier. But Bracco and Matthews on Montebo, who is in there once again. Second period, that'll be a goal for Toronto. Gaunts on Montebo. Third period, nothing doing. <laughs> Could be a little bit here before we see a first goal from either Wright or Dundas. Hoping not too much longer for either of them, but uh, it's definitely not an ideal start to the season so far, nonetheless. So, game against Colorado. Let's hope we see something here. First period. Nothing doing. Second period. And there's a goal for Radic Faxa. But Jost and Landeskog on Shesterkin. And third period. Let's see. We have Byfield once again. So his second career goal. And then Kasha on Leonard. But then McKinnon, Lazar, and Jost on Shesterkin for the 5-3 to three loss. All right. Chicago. Let's <laughs> hope so we see a first goal here. Give me something to be. Give us something to be excited about here, boys. First period. There you go. Goal by Dickinson, unfortunately. Second period. Okay. Goal by Faxa again. So Faxa's hot to start the season. And then Alexander Nylander on Shesterkin. Third period. We have a goal for Quenville. <laughs> Empty net goal for John Quenville. And this is ooh, rough, rough start to the season. One and six to start out. You absolutely hate to see it. All right. Uh, Calgary. Let's uh, hope we can... I have a first goal here, either Dundas or a right or both. That'd be great. First period, goal by Manson on Allen, but Goudreau with two and Lindholm on the power play on Montebo makes it three one after one. Second period, all right, goal by Faxa once again. So Faxa continues to be hot, but Hannafin gets the goal on Montebo, scores four two going into the third third period, and we have there it is Shane Wright with his first NHL goal. And Burakovsky joins the party as well, but Goudreau with the hat trick and Holtz with a goal as well. Makes it 6-4 to four in favor of the Calgary Flames. So we're waiting on Dundas at this point, but that may take a while given that he's a defenseman. So I'm satisfied with seeing Byfield and Wright get their first goals. So at this point in the season, obviously not ideal. We are 1-7. <laughs> Radic Faxa continues to be hot. But other than that, we're and other than the first goals that we saw with Byfield and Wright, not a whole lot to be excited about at the moment. Faxa with seven points, Kasha with six, Heedle with four, three for Burakovsky, Simmons, Montour, and Kapanen, two for Byfield, two for Manson, two for Wright, two for Flores, Baca, Carlson, two for Palat, one for Fleury, one for Murphy, one for Benning, one for Tanev, one for Dundas, and ben, uh, Bennett. With zero so far. And a goal, Shesterkin with an 879 save percentage. And Montebo with an 847. <laughs> uh, this is not how I was, ex I was expecting this to go. This is really not a good team. <laughs> so let's take a look at our team stats real quick. Let's see if we can fix anything about the power play or the penalty kill or something. Just something to give, give us life, you know. So we are currently last in goals for per game, 1.88. And we are currently last in goals against per game, 4.5. It is looking not good. And our power play has yet to score. <laughs> oh, man. It just keeps getting worse. Our penalty kill is at a 76.9. So, I, honestly, that's the least of my worst right now is the penalty kill. But, man. Yeah. Besides that game against Vegas and the cup, first couple of goals that we had from Byfield and Wright. Uh, yeah. This is... This is not looking good. And we are only one month through the season. So honestly, I think we're going to stop it here. Just because I want to know what your guys' opinions are on if we should send Byfield down to the AHL. Because I believe that he's old enough for the AHL now. 
or if we should leave him up in the NHL? And what should we do about Wright as well? Should we send Wright back down to juniors? I mean, what should we do about these two? You know, I, I feel like Byfield should be ready for the NHL, though, at this point. He's already 20 years of age. He didn't really have a whole lot of growth last year, so that's kind of why I'm hoping that by playing in the NHL on a on a top six role in a plus three line chemistry line, that he'll be able to get some offense going. But clearly, that's not the case as of right now. How is Burakovsky doing? Yeah, Burak- even Burakovsky is being held back a little bit. Only three points so far. Maybe should we put them on a different line? Or, like, what should we do about these two? Byfield and Wright. I don't know what your guys' opinions are on that. Defensively, Dundas, he's not doing terrible. I wish he'd be getting more points, but he's only a minus five in a season where we're one and seven so far. He's got four hits. We'll see how he simulates physically over the course of the season. Maybe he would benefit from less ice time, though. Uh, Flurry. He only has one assist currently. Maybe his offense is being held back by the likes of Peyton Dundas. Maybe you move Flurry back with Manson, and then you have Montour with Dundas instead so that you're not holding back Flurry. Well, whatever it is, it's clearly not working right now. Maybe do we need a... We probably need a better backup, I would say, than Montebo, because Montebo currently is below an 850 in three games played. But other than that, you, you guys got to let me know because whatever decision we make here could potentially influence the trajectory of our rebuild, you know? Yeah, I'm going to leave it off here. But actually, before we do so, I'm going to check out the defensive stats on Byfield and on um, on Shane Wright. So Byfield, he's being physical right now. He's He has 16 hits so far in eight games. He had no hits last year in nine games. So he's clearly mature enough physically and he's not giving the puck away so he's he's not being a liability not defensively anyway but he's possibly being a liability offensively now what about right he has two points uh takeaways or giveaways are great eight to three only one hit but we know he's not really gonna hit as an 18 year old playmaker especially and one block so he's not again they're not neither of them are doing terrible as far, from a defensive standpoint, but my concern is that they're on the top six with a plus three with Burakovsky, who normally is on pace for around 45 to 50 points. And not only are they not getting offense themselves, but they're also holding back Burakovsky, it looks like. So let me know what we should do with those two. Let me know what we should do with Dundas and Flurry. Should we keep it as Flurry and Dundas, or should we have Montour up here? with Dundas instead or should we move Dundas back down to the top four he's definitely definitely got to stay in the top four no matter what because his role is top four defenseman we got to grow this guy but Byfield's currently a fourth liner according to his role and Wright is a depth forward so what do we do about these two uh what do we do about everything right now to be honest because (laughs) as you can see it's not looking good right now so I'll leave this one off here And let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in the next one when we continue in number four.